You're watching Telecom TV from the SCWS World Event in London. And I'm joined now by Stefan Lichens, who is the chairman of the Multifire Alliance. Stefan, very good to talk to you again. Tell me more about the concept behind Multifire. So Multifire is a LTE-based technology uh, which operates entirely in a licensed spectrum. So that means that anybody can build a Multifire network. So you know that is the big difference between, for example, Multifire and technologies like LAA and LTE Unlicensed, which still require an anchor in the license spectrum. So here, everything is an unlicensed, giving everybody opportunity to build their own LTE network. And what's the significance of anchor spectrum? Uh, it's significant because uh, it means you need the own license spectrum, right? So and if you if you are not uh, having license spectrum, you are not able to utilize LTE technology today. So but with Multifire, because everything is in the unlicensed, like uplink, downlink, control channels, so it's a fully standalone system. And, uh, and that creates new opportunities actually for both operators and also for both newcomers that think they can do creative and innovative things with, uh, with these kind of opportunities. Which brings me on to the business opportunities. What are these new opportunities that Multifire will enable? So if you look to Multifire, basically what it brings is it has some new attributes compared to other unlicensed technologies. You have mobility, so you can do handover. So if you have a voice call up and you walk out of the building, it stays up. And it has good quality of service, so, so LTE, uh, is a technology which is built to work in an interfering environment, right? Some, some technologies are built to avoid, but LTE works in, in an interference environment, so you have very good quality and it stays good. So and that means when you have more mission critical applications, for example, if you would like to bring wireless technology in hospitals, um, in, in other places where perhaps the existing technology is not good enough, now you can do it. So you can widen um, the use cases uh, as compared to today. You talk about Multifire acting as a neutral host. What does that mean? Oh, the neutral host is probably the biggest use case we have um, because um, you know one of the things with um, Multifire is it's, it's, it's existing in bands which are available everywhere. For example, one of the bands is 5 gigahertz. So when you put Multifire in 5 gigahertz, well, actually, you can do that in any country around the world. So what you can do is that, for example, a shopping mall or a stadium builds a Multifire network in 5 gigahertz, and when the phones have it, so any phone could roam into that network. And, uh, and in that sense, the stadium would become a neutral host. So, so you go from an operator network into a stadium, into a band that exists everywhere, and you have the similar quality of services that you would have on the macro network. We've heard about possible interference issues with LTEU and LAA. So how will Multifire coexist with other technologies in the license exempt bands? Of course, you know, when we, when we looked at Multifire, one of the basic things you think at is a fair sharing of spectrum. And I think uh, there is a set of guidelines to which every technology and unlicensed needs to adhere to. And Multifire, um, you know, it has the same attributes, listen before talk, etc. That, that also, you know, technologies like Wi-Fi have. So these um, um, coexisting features in Multifire are similar to Wi-Fi. So there is absolutely no problem on coexistence. And in fact, uh, you know, multiple companies have shown that, including, uh, for example, the company I work for. So who is behind the Multifire Alliance? Who are the member companies supporting it? And what are you working on at the moment? So Multifire was, um, as an alliance, was established by, by Nokia and Qualcomm. Um, at some point, we realized we were both working on the same topic. You know, we met uh, together, we talked about it and said, hey, let's take this forward together. So we set up the alliance, uh, which also had uh, Intel and Ericsson as co-founders. Um, they were one of the early parties we started to talk with. And since it has grown, so I think we have, uh, you know, pioneers in there like SpiderCloud. We have Wi-Fi participation via Ruckus. We have Boingo as an entrepreneurial operator. Now SoftBank joined, which is a big big party. This week actually Cisco came on board. So, so the amount of members is growing and uh, I think uh, diversity is also quite good going from uh, new entrants to established parties. So what are the further steps that the Multifire Alliance must do in order to launch this on a global scale? So there's a, there's a few things to, to make this take off. So one is that um, we need to have a standard, right? So even though we say it's, it's based on LTE, you know, we need to formulate what is really needed and we need to make sure everybody implements the products in the same way. So, so we have a team um, defining the standard that's coming out um, in the fourth quarter this year. It's Multifire Release 1 um, and that would be the basis for the first 
product implementation. At the same time, I think all the members are starting to develop their products. And when they come out, of course, we also need a certification process. So another arm of the alliance is that we set up the certification so that ultimately we know that whatever product comes to the market, it meets the standard that we are setting up. And then, of course, you know, we have somebody looking at regulatory aspects, country by country. Is there something we should think of? We have a marketing committee, etc. SoftBank has recently joined you as a member. How significant is that to have a Tier 1 operator on board? SoftBank is the first Tier 1 global operator, so we are very happy they joined um, and that they are seeing the potential that they can use Multifire to, to augment the macro network. Because uh, even though Multifire is uh, expanding the ecosystem, it has good opportunities for operators. Because still, if you look to small cells today, when you put in a small cell, you still need to think, how does it interwork with the macro? Because it's always the same band. And as to where Multifire is in a totally different band, you have no issues at all, no code channel. So, you know, so the way to deploy it is much simpler. And they, I think SoftBank is one of the first companies to, to look at those different attributes and how can they benefit from that. So how does all this fit with the work that the 3GPP is doing on the evolution of LTE? Well, we are staying in sync with the uh, 3GPP. And of course, if you look to the member companies like Ericsson, Nokia, Qualcomm, Intel, we're all very active in 3GPP and, and we leverage the 3GPP standard as much as we can. So especially LAA and uh, LTEU, which has some of the similar mechanisms for fair sharing and contention. So we take those in and then, of course, when needed, we add you know, the specific developments to, to make it a standalone system. And how might this play into the future development of 5G? Actually, it's, it's a great, um, how shall we call it, predecessor for you know, what you can do with 5G. So because I think uh, Multifire, again, it brings connectivity to places it doesn't exist yet. It allows use cases you cannot do yet. For example, with the lower latency, I think it's an excellent play to try out IoT, to connect machines, people, devices, in, in indoor uh, and industrial environments, as I said earlier, hospital areas. So I think uh, success in uh, Multifire probably is a good indication that 5G would be successful as well. Stefan, good to talk to you again. Thank you very much indeed.